Hey guys, I'm Aaron back in the garage today, this time with the M4, and I'm going to do that coolant flush that I've been talking about. If you haven't seen the cooling system overview, I made an initial video that is the first part of this really, so go check it out in this link over here. So that was all the science behind it, and now we're going to put it into practice and actually change the coolant. If this is your first time to my channel, I ask you to please subscribe, like this video, and enjoy the rest of the content that I have here. The first thing I'm going to do today is remove the front bumper of the car. Now that's not necessary if you're just going to change the coolant, but since I'm doing kind of a series on the cooling system, you get a lot more access to see it. So I just wanted to show you guys what's behind there. I'll actually create a separate video on how to remove the front bumper. So click on the link here if you want to do that yourself or just see how it's done. But when you see my car with no bumper on it, don't be surprised. That's why. Okay, so we got the bumper off now and before I start I just wanted to check our level of coolant and also show you guys how to do it in case you didn't know. So they have this weird way to check it with this yellow, mm, looks like a little toilet seat in there to me. You can see that fluid level where it's shiny. It's almost up at the very top of the back of the toilet there. As long as the coolant is above the toilet seat down there. The toilet seat is the minimum mark in the back of the toilet tank, I'll call it, is the maximum mark. So you want them between those two levels. So mine is almost all the way full and the car is cold. It's been sitting here for a day. So that is, of course, the charge air expansion tank, which is right there. So for the engine cooling part of the system, this is the expansion tank for that one. So we can check the level of this one. Lots of threads. So we'll look down here and this one has the same. We'll go with the toilet seat theme. You can see mine has fluid just barely sitting on top of the back of that tank. So it is completely full. Now one issue that I have read on the forums and one of the threads that got me started going down this whole path was specifically talking about this, how people would run out of fluid here if there was a leak uh, in this thing and uh, things would start overheating. So they say you're supposed to be able to touch this right after you run the car and it's supposed to feel cool. Uh, and I noticed the last time I did it, it was definitely not cool. It didn't burn me, but it was, um, I would consider it very warm to hot. So I guess uh, after we change this, I will keep an eye on that and see if it's any different, but if people have any suggestions for me or thoughts on that, uh, please let me know in the comments below. All right, I'm going to start with the uh, charge air side of this. And like I said in the other video, right here is our electric pump. And most people disconnect this hose right here. Mechanic said BMW says to connect both sides of the water pump. So I could see how disconnecting this is equivalent to disconnecting here, even a little bit better. So you're going to get everything in this drained out and this system should drain down into there as well. By disconnecting the top, I can see the advantage of that because water probably doesn't just freely flow through the water pump. So that would uh, get some more out. But I just looked down here and that looks like it would be super hard to get off or at least harder than I want to try to do right now. So I see why people do that and I think I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me show you what it looks like. All right, so this is our auxiliary radiator and this is our main radiator for this system. Uh, you can see that this hose right here is the one that goes up into the top of this radiator. Right there is the connection and this hose, if you follow it, it tees back in there, uh, right on top of the water pump. So if you go under the car, we can see that this right here is the electric pump. And you can see the connections coming off it. This one that comes off the side wraps around and ends up coming up here and feeding into the bottom of our auxiliary one, which if I back up, you can see is just right under the car and really easy to reach and get to and disconnect. So that's why people do it. 
But on top of the water pump, on the other hand, the other hose goes straight down on top of it. So I'll point to an arrow of the connection here that goes straight onto the top and you're not going to get your hand up in there to get it. So I'm not sure how you would disconnect it. Now there is this little plastic bracket that you could undo one bolt over here. Right up in there is one bolt you could undo that would take off that black plastic sleeve and allow the water pump to be free, I believe, but still don't think you would be able to pull it down or maneuver it enough to get that other pipe up off there easily. So now if you've done this before or you have an idea of how they would disconnect uh, both of those, please let me know in the description below and uh, I would be happy to hear what you guys recommend. Like I said, I'm going to do what everybody else does and just disconnect it right here. All right, just got the front bumper back on and I wanted to point out that if you're not removing the bumper, you will need to remove this panel to on both sides. It has the same panel and it'll easily let you get to that coolant line. So there's just uh, three here and three up top and this. This one right here that looks like it's just part of the fender liner actually shares a hole with this panel because there's a strip of this panel that runs back behind here. So you will need to take this off as well. All right, I have my assistant Eric here again today. <laughs> He's gonna help me do this while I film it. Do the C clip first. All right, so it's just a little C clip that you can pull down with a flathead screwdriver. Hopefully it'll be a lot easier than your E82. It's working slow. Oh, there we go. I try not to drink as much of it this time. Yeah. <laughs> Had enough experience with that. Alright, now I don't have the cap open, so I'm going to go ahead and open that and see will let it come out faster. Oh, uh, here you're coming down. Yeah, gloves and goggles are always a good idea. All right, so that was a good little amount. All right, so it's not really much fluid that came out, which is surprising. All right, so I'm gonna measure out how much came out of this. All I have is these little eight ounce cups. So uh, approximately every four and a quarter of these things is gonna equal to one liter. So I'm just gonna Scoop it out, and surprisingly, this, this stuff is yellow. Three and a quarter, so I'm about uh, a little more than a liter short. All right, taking a little detour here. When you come right underneath this uh, horizontal one is my oil cooler. So I just have oil flowing through it. It is connected on both sides and these two tubes meet up and go up there somewhere to uh, get oil. All right, so this is the top of the oil cooler and all the way back here where this bar is beyond that is supposedly where the MDCT transmission cooler is and it is all covered up by leaves. So we're definitely gonna have to vacuum all of that stuff out. Also, while I'm cleaning in here, I'm finding a lot of big uh, chunks of tire from the track. So back to our engine side, we have our main radiator here that is connected to the little auxiliary one on the driver's side and it has the exact same looking connector 
as our uh, one that we just disconnected from the other side. So we're going to disconnect this one now and see how much coolant we get out from this side. So on the engine side, if it's auxiliary radiator, we're going to do the same exact thing. Pop open a C-clip. So yeah, the stuff is blue and the stuff that came out of the charge air system was definitely yellow. So the first side drained out really fast. It stopped within under two minutes. This has been going on for, I don't know, 10 plus minutes now, still dripping out. Uh, I don't know if you remember from the first video that I made, the suggested way to do this was to actually lift just this corner of the car to get more of the fluid out. So I thought I would do a test and while it is up, uh, jacked up on my quick jack just flat go ahead and drain everything I can and then I'm gonna lower it back down and just lift it from this corner over here like they said to see if any additional coolant comes out and then it'll be my definitive way to know if it matters okay we're gonna jack it up from this side and uh, as you can see when I lowered the car some more came out and we'll see if it's already coming out just by lifting that corner. That'll be. Yeah. Oops. And more is coming out the other side too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess we should lift this corner up for. It's recommended on both sides, obviously, as you can see right here as we fill my floor. Well, I think we found the other leader over there. I like the rigidity of the M4 too. You lift one corner and this whole side comes up. Oh. All right. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're getting a ton more fluid out this way. All right, so our liquid measurements are gonna be a little skewed because the coolant, as you can see, is draining almost all the way out of the garage there, but uh, luckily the wife's out of town and she doesn't watch my YouTube videos. So just out of curiosity, we're gonna jack it up on the passenger side since we're here and we can see if anything else comes up. Look how I'll be, look at that. The charge air side definitely likes this. Yeah, got a bunch more out. All right, go ahead and drop it, and then we will uh, connect our hoses back up. Sides and reconnected this. Just push them in, stick the C-clip back in, went in really, really easy. Here's the rear view of the excess coolant. It's a good grade in my garage, I guess. All right, now we're gonna measure what we have left. So here is another eight ounces that came out of the charge air side, and Another one ounce almost, and several ounces on the ground. So that comes out to our four liters. We have two buckets of this stuff to measure for our engine side. Here, I'll hold the cup if you want to just pour it in. Okay. Might be easier. So 25 of those plus three more ounces. I'll do some math and then however much that is. So we just did the math. It should have been 203 ounces that went in and that according to Siri is six liters. So uh, six liters is our answer plus whatever else came out. All right, so it should be a little bit less than 
two gallons, which will be perfect. So we're just gonna mix a gallon of antifreeze with a gallon of distilled water in this bucket that I just cleaned out. All right, I've used this tool one time before on my Porsche Boxster and it worked wonders. So we're gonna try it on the M4. So I have to remember how to use it. And I'll put a link to this in the description. Got it on Amazon, uh, not very expensive and super handy. This comes with a bag of different sized grommet adapter type things that look like this. This is the 40 millimeter one. My Porsche Boxster used the 35 millimeter, but this one seems to be a nice snug fit here. And then you take this end and stick it in there. And when you spin this part, it expands this out. Yep. So put that adapter on first. And then jam it in there. Yeah, it doesn't have to get all the way down, I don't think. It's pretty even all the way around. Yeah. So now I just twist this. All right, so the second piece that comes with it has a quick disconnect that clips right on here. And we're going to connect our air compressor up here. And it is going to blow air through here, creating a vacuum in here. And this tube eventually will lead down. There it is. It's got a little filter on it, some old coolant from last time. And that is going to go into our fresh bucket to suck coolant into the system. So right now this valve is closed, so it's not going to suck anything up. Uh, this valve is open and we'll open this valve when we hook our air compressor up here and we're going to try to get to negative 25 pounds of pressure or whatever denomination that is. Right, so I'll hook him up. negative 25. All right, we can disconnect this after you're at the right pressure and if you, you've left it here for a few minutes and it is still at 25, so know, you know that your system is under pressure and it's not leaking anywhere, so that's also good information. Now, just take this guy and drop it into our bucket. It's a reach. Yeah, we put the bucket on the side. There we go. We'll improvise, raise our bucket up since our car is still jacked up. And then all you do is open this valve here. And shoo. Let's open it slowly at first because there's a lot of pressure there. And now all of the coolant is getting sucked back into the system. And once our pressure drops a little more, and it's not such high pressure, we can open this valve all the way up and it will fill. Yeah, I'm opening it more. Yeah. Oh yeah, just open it up. It is flowing in there now. It's not cool. All right, so when it gets all the way to empty, that means there's no more air pressure, so that there's no more air in there and it is now gonna be all cooled. All right, this means we're done. Just uh, gonna remove our cap now. I can remove this. This right here. All that drained back down into our bucket. Now, if we look in here, we are a little bit over full, but we can pull some out if we need to here. Um, 
but I'm gonna run the system a little bit and if there is any air, which there shouldn't be, it might uh, bleed itself a little bit more. All right, so the engine side is good. Now for the charge air side, I am going to just fill this up with water through here and bleed it to try to get all of the stuff out. That way you can also see the bleeding sequence for using the electric pump in case you don't have a vacuum bleeder like I do. All right, I'm gonna reach over here and uh, it's just water, so. Oh, that wasn't bad. It's pretty good, actually. Here it is. Okay. Bubbles are already working his way up. <laughs> so I'll top it off a little more. Oops, I did better the first time. All right, I've been slowly adding water for I don't know, five or ten minutes now. It's very slowly going in, and uh, it's going to take quite a while, it seems like. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes now, and we've only put in a little less than half a gallon, but it's not going anywhere. So I am going to try to initiate the bleed sequence for the charge air side. So like I mentioned in the other video, when we initiate the sequence, it is only going to bleed the charge air side because it is the only one that has an electric pump. The engine cooling side has a belt driven pump, so it will not get bled until the car is actually started. All right, I tried this so many times, I can't remember what I recorded, and uh, so I wanted to see where it actually was. So the headlight was on, I had the seat belt plug in here. I had this settings on high, low fan speed, turned off the automatic mode. Uh, I had this in Sport Plus. I don't have that anymore. It's coded out. I had this in Sport Plus. Uh, when I press this one, it doesn't do anything where we are here. And then I had held the pedal all the way down to the floor. Waited 10 seconds, let go of it, and then we had to wait uh, six minutes before we heard the actual bubbling and bleeding happen. All right, so there's a really high-pitched buzzing from our electric water pump down there. And then the fans for the lights kick on to cool them off. But nothing has happened yet, so I was told to be patient and wait a few minutes and I should finally start hearing some bubbling in the reservoir or seeing it so we'll see. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so when they say be patient, they're not kidding. It was what, six minutes? Yeah, we got five minutes left from 11 minutes when we started. So, no longer. Holy cow. So there were a couple of bubbles at least. I heard a little bit of a rant. There it is. And they're not kidding. That's why I have this uh, SeaTech charger hooked up. I can see why with these uh, fans and lights and stuff going, you would want to be hooked up. I think you'd be fine for 11 minutes, but you're supposed to do this three times. Quite a bit. 
What do we have on the clock? Oh, I stopped it after it started. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I've been recording for four and a half minutes after that, so that's about right. It's about 11 minutes. So I read that you have to power off the car and wait for five minutes before starting this procedure again. And they say to do it three times to get it fully bled. For me though, I just wanted to do it once to rinse out all of the old stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain this out again now. And then I'm going to not go through that torture again and use my vacuum fill tool again to fill it back up this time. One great reason to take the bumper off is to clean this. It's still got a ton of stuff in here, but I've already vacuumed out a forest. So I've just been taking a small flathead screwdriver and gently scraping lots and lots of crap out from under there. So this was 10 more seconds of scraping. So even though it looked like I had already gotten a ton of stuff out, there's way more in there. All right, after doing all that vacuuming, it looks a lot better, but I also realized that I could probably just remove these two bolts and one on the other side and drop this oil cooler down and all of this crap will fall out. So I'm gonna do that. All right, these things are 12 millimeter bolts. Right. So with those three off, it's just connected by these hoses and yeah, I didn't need to be doing all the vacuuming. Just take these three off and shake this out. So this will probably do just as much for your cooling system as changing the coolant will. So I highly recommend removing the bumper at this point and cleaning it all out. All right, we just mixed up one more batch of one gallon of BMW coolant with one gallon of distilled water. And we're gonna use the vacuum fill procedure now for the charge air system. All right, we've got this set up on here again, the 45 millimeter one that we used for this one, I'm sorry, the 40 millimeter one that we used for this one was just barely too big for that opening. So I used the 35 millimeter adapter. And I'm gonna see if it is Tight enough. Close these two valves. We'll just make sure, hold this here, check back in a minute, make sure that our pressure is holding. Still negative 25, so we have this running down here to our coolant. So we'll open this valve. And I'll let it start sucking the coolant. Put it all the way. And it shouldn't take too long and we're expecting it to suck about 
four liters worth of our coolant. It's going really fast. I'll just let it go until it stops. I guess it stopped. And, yeah. So you can see it stopped already. It's not taking any more out, so we can close this valve. Press a little semi quick disconnect off of here. <laughs> Alright, right, so just like our other one, it is a little bit overfilled because it replaced all of the air in there. So I'm just going to take a little syringe and suck some out of there. Alright, so I'm just taking a syringe and... Alright, that is... Perfect. So, I'm just gonna shoot this back into our bucket. And since this one was a little overfilled too, same thing here. Alright, the tip of this particular syringe doesn't reach down quite far enough to get it all out there, but I have not driven this car yet, so I'm sure once I do that, some of it will be mixed around in the system. Alright, so this is uh, vacuum filled, so I'll probably go ahead and do that procedure one more time to bleed it electronically with the electronic water pump. But for the engine side, this is the proper procedure for that. I vacuum filled it, so it's it's not necessary, but in case you didn't vacuum fill it, this is what you would do. You're gonna leave the cap off and you're gonna start the car. You can do the same thing we did with the other side with the high heat on and the fan on low. And I'm gonna run the car until it starts burping itself. So I'm gonna start it now and we should see this possibly burping if it had not been vacuum filled, it would definitely be burping. So hopefully we won't see much burping. All right, that was five minutes. So I'm gonna turn the car off and put the cat back on. All right, and while you're doing that and after you vacuum filled, of course, you make sure that there's no leaks down here. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to lower it and drive the car around the block a few times. And then I'm just going to leave it and let it cool down completely and uh, later on tonight or even tomorrow in the morning, I'm going to check the coolant levels. If this one still has too much, I'm going to take a little bit out. If either of them need more, I'm going to top them up. And that is it. The coolant is changed. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and there will be more BMW content coming.